much and uh, interesting to see what he does here. Yeah, so he missed the blue there, and so that's the end of his turn. So it gives Josh a go. So Josh's yellow is up by the um, third, uh, the second hoop. So he's got long shots no matter which way he goes here. He certainly has. But he's a handy shot, Josh, not to be uh, taken lightly <laughs> in, any, uh, in any event. That angle just previously almost showed that red might have a double with blue and black, though it would be horrible to take with the black on the border. Yes, it is. So he's not I even think... interested. No. He'll be looking to connect here and, and, uh, and then be able to go down and start that break. Doesn't look as though he hit. It was a bit difficult to see on that shot that I've got. Yeah, that was unfortunate. It would have been a great start for him. So um, I might leave you until a bit later on in the afternoon. So um, good watching, Rosie and Ed. And I'll catch you then. Ed, you're still on? Thanks, Tim. Yep. Uh, Thanks, Tim. Good day's play so far, so we'll look forward to hearing from you later. Um, All right. So Lachlan looks to be uh, taking the aggressive option and shooting with black again um, to continue his break. Clearly, he's got some good plan there, Ed. Unfortunately, it hasn't come off. And... Uh, Looks like it might be Josh's opportunity here to, uh, with all those balls out nicely in the lawn, to, to get something going. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Seven yarder and then uh, he's either got a ball um, into the lawn or, um, you know, on the boundary, whatever he's, whatever he's keen on to get started. Um, it's still a bit of work to do. Uh, you know, not no yeah. two balls nice and close to each other to get an easy rush to hoop one. Um, and then there won't be a nice load at hoop one. You know, Actually, it's the only real hope that he can get is a good rush on black a long way south um, to get that up to two going to blue. Um, yeah. now, it does look, look like at he's this. taking the aggressive option. <laughs> aggressive shot. I was wondering exactly when you were talking, I was thinking, I wonder if he's going to uh, take that aggressive shot just to make that start fractionally easier for himself. It's not a huge amount easier, as you say, because he's, oh, my Lord, excuse me. Oh, okay. So some interactive play now, I assume, for a wee while. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a <laughs> little bit of an odd one. Um, yeah, you really would would like to hit that if you're taking that shot on, because um, it is a bit more high risk, high reward. Um, where obviously missing to your partner on the boundary, you don't have this uh, situation where um, Lachlan gets an easy uh, shot. Um, correct, correct. But, you know, maybe it's indicative of, yeah, and agree, but maybe it's indicative too of um, Lachlan's earlier play today in which he was, um, from what we hear, very aggressive, very early, and, and it sort of reaped rewards for him. Um, you know, game three, though, yeah, but makes a difference. Likewise from Josh, um, you know, maybe feeling that pressure of Lachlan playing well. Um, to try and Correct. generate something um, a Correct. Bit more challenging. I agree, um, I agree. But it's not all wrapped up in Lachlan here either. He needs to have a good roll down. Um, yeah, as you say, and it's not an easy shot, although he's clearly got the, the heft to do it, but it's um, not an easy shot.
that's handy. That'll do. Red's yeah, way good, the, but... Um, but rush is the most important thing there, for sure. So. Yeah. Quite a good shot. Yep. And yellow's nice and, nice and handy up at one back as well. I mean, it's sad that it's not probably going to come into play early, or not sad, but not opportune. But um, it, it's there. It's in the mix. I'm going to have to go hunting for it. But a half decent rush out of this uh, after this hoop, and we're um, and he's on his way. Hopefully for him. Ouch. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Um, he's got the rush out south, which is where he needs it. Um, Correct. You know, all the balls are in the lawn. This is a pretty good opportunity to pick up a break. Yeah. I really like yeah. how much easy power he's got in his shots. Um, you know, quite a long mallet handle, uh, and he doesn't overhit the ball, but he's got plenty of power from a really nice yeah. swinging. I, swing. Yeah, it, it, it does. It looks effortless, doesn't it? It really, really does. Blue's not interesting to see where black's ended up, really. What sort of a leave would you be looking at, um, Edward? If you uh -huh. were, if this is you, what, what, where, what's your go-to leave in in this particular situation? Um, You're playing Josh Wilson. What's your go-to leave? Well, at at this point, I'm um, definitely focusing on on getting through my next few hoops, um, and then re-evaluating -evalu once I've got the court a little bit better laid out and under a bit more control. Um, yeah, you know, obviously Josh is on one and one, so probably from here I'm I'm just looking at a, um, a diagonal spread, really, or a horizontal spread. Um, nothing too crazy, you know. As long no. as you know you're playing well, you you're, you're able to peel. Um, so there's no need to attempt something more difficult than. Um, Oh, that was unlucky. Uh, he's just that knocked off the peg there. Um, he has. So he's got a little bit more of a long dribbler, um, and he'll be he either taking off behind the hoop or heading up to yellow. Oh my he's goodness! Rolled past that one. Yeah, in speaking about your leave, it was interesting. Um, you know, the last time. Um, Fulford was in Australia and was talking about the current um, the current fashion of leaves in Australia at that time, which were two threes and uh, sorry, which were uh, two tight two fours and warm standard leaves and all sorts of stuff. Um, he made the comment that um, when he was out there, he was doing spreads, nice tight spreads, good spreads. And he said, I said, why aren't you doing anything fancy? And he said, because I'd prefer to just triple straight out for my next turn. So his attitude was the easiest leave for himself to get going, um, to get that triple going. Oh, the rain's coming down now. And it yeah. was predicted. Yep. Yeah, pretty standard for Cam Lee as well. You're never really turning up um, <laughs> no matter what the season um, you know, Correct. expecting it to be dry the whole time. Uh, so these guys will both have their wet weather gear ready to go. Um, as you see Josh walking out in... Has he put anything on or is he just... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, no, he seems to have some sort of a cute duster's coat going. It is, it is a little bit fashion forward, Josh, in terms of croquet, the normal standards of croquet with his... Bucket hat and his vintage blue Adidas trackies. So uh, yeah, no, it looks like he's got some sort of a duster coat happening there. Wet weather coat.
Oh, we can even hear the wind. Um, hear the wind there in the in the earphones. So here we go. Uh, missed it on the left. Yep. So, so a good panoramic shot of uh, Cam Lee at the moment. Oh, as we uh, go back down to our zoomed in camera. You see Trevor up the back yeah. there, looking like he's on a nice break. Yeah. Trevor in play. It looks like the, towards the end of his break, um, saw him running hoop four earlier. Um, so that oh, lovely. three back. So he'll be setting for a leave. Excellent. And then another, yeah, cleaner game than uh, slightly earlier. Um, obviously, that was a <laughs> nine and nine. So started off quite high quality, but um, ended, you know, with a bit more of a tussle. Um, yeah. Well, he'll be happy about be that. The state of play in this game as well. Bit of a tussle. Yeah. Um, Lachlan's had the run of it, but there's been no really quite clean breaks to play yet. Well, Lachlan appears to be uh, toughing it out in his kit, normal kit. Rain and cold. They make him tough in Terralgan, I hear. Yeah, wow, well, hey, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Yes, uh, viewers will be uh, uh, deceived by the weather conditions, by the players' attire. Uh, Lachlan dressed the way he is and everybody else hunkered down for the winter. So, so he hasn't got that load up there anymore at one back. I, because of the where the camera angle is, well, where will he be going back to? I can't quite, I know yellow's over on the other well, boundary, but where is red? Uh, red's over near Rover. Um, so okay. it looks like he'd be taking this rush. Little um, two ball. Straight to, straight to one back and that's a, to a tough little position. The so yeah. tough to get in front of the hoop and then, you know, your chances of getting a rush out of it are, very low as well and this hoop also can have some issues um, just in front of it yeah I think you might be going over to get the yellow oh that's a great shot so in the hoop there hasn't yeah, given away a look quite. either I think it might be clear, but with a bit of wire. Is that through? No. I think that's just through. Or not. No, he's putting a clip on it. Sorry. Just, I thought I could see a little glint of that out, inside, outside leg, sorry, out, as before when he was looking. But the ref's come up to confirm. Mike Conn, out and about today, referee. Many familiar faces around Camley. 100%. Well, as you say, it's probably lucky for him that he didn't actually go through and then have a wide position on the, uh, on the blue, uh, now yeah. having not given away the lift. So, Josh, tough shooting game so far. Um, let's see how he goes with this one. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, he's missed again. He doesn't, although we're not probably have a, the best angle, he doesn't really appear to be missing by a huge amount and always fractionally left. I know we always talk about that, don't we, when we're just whiskering things left and right and what we have to do to adjust, but it could be something as simple as the wind when they're that close. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and, you know, when you haven't really connected with a couple, um, you can be out of rhythm and, and just be mistiming it slightly. Yes. That's all it takes to, you know, they, they're not easy shots to hit. Um, 
they're still, you know, he hasn't really had many short ones. I know one seven yarder, um, but that that's still in the context when you haven't been on the lawn can be quite a difficult shot to play. Yeah. Look, I'm I'm sorry. I've been corrected. It, um, I'm, I've confused um, Lachlan with um, an earlier player <laughs> and said that he was from Traralgon. He's actually from MCC. It's, I think that's the Melbourne Cricket Club, uh, Croquet Club, is it not? Have I got those initials incorrectly? Oh, we're looking at the sky. So sorry about that, Lachlan. Nice crisp rush from uh, Trevor in the background. We could all hear. Nice sound. Yeah, not sure if he's um, this is that's post leave or where he's up to. Um, but really, I I think the his leave was playing. missed, and I think he's on his yeah on his way over to yeah over hoop one. And there's Claire. Yep. So it's great, great camera today, and the sun appears to be out again. As you say, we love Classic Melbourne Ken and Lee. we love Ken Lee. <laughs> I know that's not a bad rush. It's within. Oh, three and as you hoop. say. Effortless. He he did not appear to yeah. hit that overly hard, and I I would almost have said, "Oh, it's going to be a little short," but no, nope, effortless. Got there nicely. Yeah, very nice swing for sure. And as you mentioned earlier, um, you know, attempting his GC, we do have the Australian GC men's and women's championships on, so they're being played in Adelaide. Um, right now where I am and I might go spectate some of that today so it'll be worth anyone online keep keeping up with the scores of that one um, there's a lot of very yeah there have been some playing. there is there's been some good upsets too some really uh, keeping the uh, players that the highly ranked players on their toes which is always fun in these events and uh, there's been Absolutely. such a good roll up for that hundred odd players playing yep. in the men's and the women's today which is just sensational yeah, it is. It's um, really bright for for croquet. Um, being able to have participation like that in national events is is really good. And, um, you know, there are plenty of so, quality players there as well. It's sorry. Rosie. What's your observation? I was just going to say, Edward. What's your observation? I mean, much was made of the fact that the final, that all the four finalists in the recent Worlds GC in the UK were all top AC plays and I know AC you know there's it's always a gentle jibing between AC and GC but like you and like me most of us play both and um, and we try to play as at high level as high level as we can um, so what did you make of that and how do you think going forward maybe the Egyptians who've always been seen to be the strength in GC how they might answer it um. Look, I think, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, um, a lot of us try and play at a high level. I think that's just the nature of playing competitive croquet. Um, you know, you, you really want to be the best you can be. Um, and if that means there's another sport that you can play at a high level, then um, I can't imagine any of us would turn that down. You know, I know Robert, um, who, as you say, um, is or has traditionally been predominantly association croquet based, um, who made it to the semis, you know, he, he really wants to win a, a golf croquet world championship. Um, <laughs> that's something that he's driven to do. And fair enough, 100%. If you, you know, have the ability to be a world champion or, or play for your country in a sport, um, why wouldn't you? And, you know, croquet does open that up to a lot of people. So um, it is, yeah, a natural thing if you 
a competitive person, as you say, most of us are. Um, but if there's another sport that you're good at, whether it be, you know, transitioning from golf croquet to association croquet or vice versa, um, then a lot of people are into that. And, you know, maybe that's where the Egyptians may may in future um, evolve to um, start playing a little bit more association croquet. Um, yeah, they... that's what I was hoping that, that it may indicate because most of us find, I think, that in the early days we thought it might hurt our AC game and what we found is it just makes you, uh, it actually gives you more lawn time and makes you stronger, really, uh, on, in different ways and it makes you, it forces you to be flexible and learn different sorts of strengths. So, um, exactly. Both we, games we just complement each other quite they do. well. Um, you know, you, you gain some control from association croquet and you gain um, power and accuracy from golf croquet, um, which both, you know, help in each each game. Um, so we've just moved lawns now. We are uh, currently watching Trevor Bassett in break in what looks to be a triple peel. Um, he's up to hoot six in pretty good control going to blue. Mm. Um, so this is quite a good one to watch. He's going to be rolling Hi. blue to peeling position going to red. Um, Hi, Rosie and Ed. It's Trish here. Yes. Hi, G'day, Trish. G'day. How are you going? Very well. Unlucky about the uh, game just previous against Trevor. Um, looked quite close in the end there. I'm I'm pretty rusty, so I think Trevor really enjoyed it. He gave me he gave me too many turns too. <laughs> <laughs> ah well, you still well, had to do something with them, Trish, and you did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I've um I've been getting better each each tournament I come to. So this is my third since my hip replacement. Wow. Well, that's brilliant. And how are the that's lawns brilliant. playing out there? What's uh, what's the state of play at Kenley like currently? They're, they're, they're pretty quick, Ed. Um, with that little bit of rain, that slowed them down a bit. But I think now that the wind's out, wind's, the sun's out and there's a bit of wind, I think that really will speed up. But the wind's having a bit to do with some of the shots. If you hit softly, the yeah, wind okay. takes it. Mm. But I did enjoy that game with... Um, Robert with that amazing comeback. I thought that all good well for the Mac and uh, congratulations to you also for getting a spot in the Mac team. Agree. Well done. Fun. It's going to be great. It... Yeah, I think we're all yes. um, really looking forward to it and, um, you know, it's, it's good to see play out at Canley um, and high level play, of, you know, as you just mentioned, Robert playing well and, and Trevor on another triple here um, that the lawns are playing quick and um, you know we'll, we'll be looking forward to to um, bringing it on when we when we get to it um, it should be a great event and looking forward yeah, to we'll having hope to get lots of people watching as yep. well yeah yep. November November I think that's one of the best things about um, having the Mac at Can Lee is, and, and also in Australia, I know we often have, we hear some, um, you know, they're not so much complaints but observations that the conditions in Australia are always tough. And um, and I think that's not something, when, when we're playing at top level in Worlds and, and Macs, that presenting tough lawns is the true indication of uh, you know being a team being able to win or an individual being able to win in really really tough conditions and I know Chris Clark's a big fan of this is um, it, you know is the ultimate and uh, and I'm sure that's exactly what will happen when we get down to November uh, with the lawn preparation uh, at Canley has been terrific um, and they know what we need we need you know fabulous hoops on uh, what do we call them? In different surfaces, <laughs> surfaces that play no favourites, <laughs> and, yeah, and that's um, just the yeah. best. The other thing is yeah. here; these lawns are maintained by the volunteers. It's brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. Mm. Mm. 
and um, Kevin is one of those, and also Owen Dickinson and Lester, and they're all heading over to Adelaide to play in the golf croquet um, later <laughs> this week. They'll be able to critique. How unusual for a croquet player to critique other people's lawns. That'll be strange, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, they've had a lot of rain. Their lawns aren't up to much at the moment. No, well, um, we played, Pete and I played at Hyde Park about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and wow, the Hyde Park lawns were amazing, but more's the point, the hoops, and I think that was indicative um, the South Australians delight in presenting absolutely perfect hoops for events. It really uh, shone in the recent or the last couple of days over the the bronze and silver medal or gold and silver medals, pardon me, down there, where I think some players might not have uh, liked those hoops in the first day or day, day or two, some upsets there. Um, and congrats to Barry Hayden. What a solid performer from South Australia just to, to lose out in the uh, playoff was tough but that's the way it goes and to Brett McCarty for for pushing through um and and really fighting for that spot so it's good but yeah it'd be great to see apparently yeah, the, what happens apparently the water um was lying on the courts and they had to super soccer out so that would have added to the difficulty so we're we're enjoying dry conditions here and hopefully for tomorrow as well now, Trevor looks very smooth here, doesn't he? Yeah, that yeah. is a cracking little yes, um, rush from Trevor um, <laughs> against Look Roger at this. Bird. I'm afraid that Roger may have um, struggled to have taken croquet in this game so far. So um, pretty efficient from Trevor. Um, and it's good to see some nice, clean play. Um, that's why we all come out to watch. Um, croquet like this is truly, truly lovely to watch. Um, and there's not many who get into quite as um, steady and um, smooth rhythm as Trevor does um, when he's really on. 100%. It's beautiful to watch when, when Trevor's playing his, his, as you say, in his groove and with that huge mallet, he still manages to make everything look very elegant and uh, very deft. It's it's. Great stuff. Of course, Trevor's one of those who's so this... been playing since he was very young. So a lot oh, of I think it was in utero, young. wasn't it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so this is where he came up um, a little bit apart against yourself, Trish, um, but he's managed to get the rush this time um, and have elected to just rush blue into the middle of the lawn, going towards Benalt. Um It's very rare that Trevor gives the balls back once he's got all of them. He generally goes right around and he's very experienced at feeling. Oh, now, did I just give the commentators curse? You did. Oh, dear. Oh, sorry, Trev. So Trevor just... Um... A little frustrated with that one. Um, um, yeah, tough one to, to see. Um, you know, when, when a player is playing that well, um, you never like to see them um, uh, be disappointed um, with a shot. So um, unlucky from Trevor there. Uh, we'll watch Roger get a shot um, and get a go. Roger will be very surprised to have been handed this opportunity. I think so. I think. Doesn't seem he's, like he's he too might... close to the lawn either. Here, Here he comes. <laughs> no, he would have been watching from a distance and he, he didn't even have his mallet with him. Roger's another one that plays with a wooden mallet. He's had that same mallet for years. Both um, Trevor and Roger would have had to travel from uh, country Victoria to play here. Roger's from Maryborough, 
and Trevor from Kyabram. We often get people coming to Cairnley to play from uh, country areas. Nice Roger's shot, hit in. Roger. Very good. Mm -hmm. So taking croquet, um, and he's got a bit of a lawn setter. Um, I'd say yellow's in a pretty decent spot um, nearish to Hoot One or, you know, nearish to Rover. Um, he'll be able to play on from here. All right, we'll say goodbye to Rosie now, I think. Ed and um, Pete's coming on. Uh, yeah, um, I'm back here, filling in for Rosie for a little bit. Hello, Pete. Yep. Hello, Trish. Hello. Yeah, well done in your game, Trish. Hello, Trish. Oh, can you hear me? I don't, I don't think it was. Yes, I can hear you, Pete. Yep. yep. Um, I don't think it was so well done. With that, so many chances, I should have perhaps held on to it better. But um, I'm pleased to have been uh, able to at least make some hoops. Uh, it looked pretty tidy to me, Trish. It didn't look easy out there anyway. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a little bit windy. Mm. Uh, Trevor's clips is this some peels done and a breakdown not a finish yeah so um missed maybe a one and a half yard dribbler um at um four back so um was just yep. tickle, tickling down to his load at four back and um skated past it don't know if there was some hill or not um he, he was quite disappointed with the shot um or expressed his disappointment with the shot. So, um, yeah, may have been a, a factor, um, you know, that affected the shot. Um, so, it, you know, has given Roger a chance um, to, to take a break back um, and get himself a bit more position in this game. Quite a long hoop he's had to go at, but unfortunately, in the yeah, hasn't succeeded in. Um, uh, he, he did play it quite soft. It looks like he was trying to get a bit of control on the rush on that yellow. Hmm. So Trevor might have left the court area as well. He probably expected Roger to to be in for a little while. So who's your next opponent, Trish? I think it's Roger. Ah, mm. okay. Oh, you're on a bye. Okay, got you. Yes, I am. Yeah. yeah, I think it's Roger. And then the only other game I'll have is Josh. Have you seen Josh at all on screen? Yes, I so was. Got, yes, Josh. Josh. One. Yeah, there's Josh now on the other court. Okay. So Trev's up there, just he's probably gone to make a cup of tea and now he's had to drop that and come on out. There he is. I'm not sure where the balls are for um, what he's looking at there. One near hook six. Don't know if he's got a very long ropey. A nice swing from Trev. No, yeah, nice controlled yes. pace. Mm. Yeah. Mm. He has a couple of swings, Trevor. He has the controlled roque and then the absolute spank pace roque, and you know, they, they both work. But it, he's flitting between the two sometimes, trying to hit them as straight as he can. Yeah, the spank pace hasn't been working for a while, so he has to and been doing quite a lot he's, more. Okay, yeah, more pace, yeah. Yeah. I think the shot was longer than it looks on screen. It's just a little bit foreshortened. 
I'm not sure if Roger hit that. Looks like he may have missed with red. Yeah, I think it slipped by. Mm. Ooh. Gives Trevor another chance. It's quite a short rope. He was black on yellow. And he nails it. Shot. That's good. Mm. So, yeah, pretty straightforward couple of croquet strokes. Um, similar position to where he was before he broke down. Um, so should be able to... Uh, well, you'll hope to do better um, this time. Um, it was interesting, Peter. Trev chose to play a similar um, selection of shots during his triple as he did against Trish, um, you know, playing the, the short roll, um, putting a ball at Rover and, and getting a rush on partner again, um, which yeah, did okay. quite well. Um, well however, yeah. ended up um, only rushing it sort of into the middle of the lawn rather than taking it down behind partner. Um, so behind his load at, at four back. Yeah. Um, so clearly liking the look of that roll and he's played it more effectively yeah. there, getting the rush to in front of the hoop. So pretty sad yeah, yeah. in okay. here. Yeah, he did join us in the commentary box earlier and I never got him to ask him that question about that line of play. I did ask him about his hoop run at Penalt was the second one any different to the first one because um, the Stroke looked a bit a different pace that he played. He said, no, they no, were in a pretty similar position. Second one might have been slightly easier, but he did say he did play it softer on the second attempt. Yeah, okay. Well, this all looks pretty comfortable for Trev this time anyway. Yeah, he's keeping this a, quite a lot tighter. Um, now to just make sure he can clean it up and um, finish the game strongly or stronger than, uh, you know, as strong as it can be without finishing his triple. Um, he will be disappointed about that one, unfortunately, as any player would. Oh, that is oh, yeah, yeah, very tight. Besides the two put downs in the games he's looked pretty solid Edward. so he's you know he's, he's looked really good yeah he's yeah he's building quite well for the event to get himself in shape for the finals if need be yeah, yeah as he, did just say that he felt a bit rusty mm. rosie just mentioned before that um yourself and her were playing in in adelaide a few weeks ago and um trevor was in that event as well and looked in good good shape there um uh, yeah yeah you're playing with good confidence um and it's uh, yeah he's, he's well he's never not normally he's always playing quite well but he has some sometimes his rotates not on all the time and sometimes he you know he's not that comfortable around the hoops but he seems to have uh, been stringing a lot more together without those popping up so if he only it only happens now and then and he can iron them out he's back to being pretty dangerous that's a nice Don't question and that roger I, I i haven't got any points here for roger but i think he did run one didn't he before he missed that okay well that is a another good confidence boosting win for um trevor there uh, he will feel a little bit disappointed, um, you know, as, as any player would, um, not finishing the triple. It's um, when you're that close and, you know, you don't succeed. I know that I struggle um, <laughs> with that a little bit, but you know, when you're in a tournament, um, pick yourself up and, and get on with the next game. So, you know, you see Trev 
play throughout the rest of the tournament. Um, try and get onto another game as that one's finished. So, yeah. They did say the two and a quarter hour game time limit allows them to get through four in the day, which is uh, good. So we've got plenty more happening for the day. Happening for the... Yeah, so this is uh, round two now, is it? Um, and Trevor's had a buy, so effectively, game. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So effectively, Trevor's got one more for the day with his buy. Head. Right. Very good. So on the screen at the moment, Lock. we've got Josh. Yeah. Here we go. So oh, no, we've got Claire Bassett um, on the lawn um, against. Can't see who her opponent is. Um, I, I think. I think, I think it's seen. Lois. I think it's Lois. Oh, uh, is it Lois? Oh, Kirk? no. It's Andrew. No, it's not Lois. It's Andrew yeah. Wooden. It is Andrew no. Wooden. Okay. All right. Well, Tim's here, and I'm a good mate of Andrew, so I can slag him off terribly. <laughs> Hi, Edward. How are you? Very well, thanks. Good to see you back, Tim. Um, Claire trying and to pick up a break on... from some balls looser around the court. Oh, hello, Tim. Court? It's... Trisha Devlin here. Hi, Trish. How are you? You're, an, you're Andrew's watch, friend, aren't you? I have, I have met you down here. Yeah, absolutely, yes. I am Andrew's friend. We both played in the 1980s and um, then both had an extensive period off and come back about four years ago, and Andrew's doing a heck of a lot better than I am. <laughs> I'm sure you've got time to improve. <laughs> Good shot from Claire there. So, so Claire's yeah. just hit the blue with the black. Anybody know where, the, has where a... the clips are? Yeah, so Sorry. it's like she's got a ball on four back. Um, blue is on four back. Um, black mm. is for hoop four. Um, so it looks like she's putting blue down to hoop five, um, going to yellow here, um, with red sort of down the lawn, ready for a next shot. So. Another cleaner game, um, but just trying to pick up the break. It doesn't look like she's got a good chance of a standard triple. Um, you know, she can definitely pick up the delayed here with a couple more good shots, and that's a really, really good croquet stroke. Um, not perfect rush on yellow, but she's close to it, so she can get some control around these next few shots, and Lily's in a really nice position at hoop five, so you'd be pretty happy with that one. Claire taking the option of the takeoff here, um, which is very legitimate. You know, it gives her um, a little bit more safety around this shot. I didn't exactly see where red is. We'll see in just a moment. Um, oh, yeah, if she's taking that shot, then it means it's quite a nice position, three or four yards in front of hoop four. So just keeping herself under control rather than trying a, a uh, larger roll there which could put her out of position um so she's she's taken a, a most controlled shot and held the rush and um should be on here i'd uh she's hit a little it's bit, bit harder, long on um, yeah so it's just whether or not she'll attempt the triple um she's got the balls in a position where she she can look at it um but needs to get through this hoop and get her break a tiny little bit more under control before she can really go for it. Um, but all in, all in all right position currently. On the lawn behind, Robert's just set up a crosswire around um, uh, either hoop four or uh, hoop three back, depending on where he's up to. Um, and he is, again, jogging around the lawn, you can see in the background. So there could be some excitement in that game um, depending on what he's doing. 
it may be a um, another sex tuple attempt um, and sort of a reverse tea lady slash ladies leave as a cracking shot from Claire. Um, she hasn't got the rush out of the hoop, but she's got all her balls still um, nice and close and playing well. She has a lovely swing. She does indeed, yeah. Um, as we were talking about Trevor, her husband, um, having played a long time, she also has.